Hey everybody, it's Miss PJ from your WCA Earth and Space Science class. And what we are looking at today is your portfolio, Trends in Air Pressure. It's in Unit 2, Lesson 4. So before we even start talking about the portfolio, let me just show you where to start for kind of getting your information organized in together. So right underneath this video, there should be a link to this lab sheet here. Trends in Air Pressure and Lab, The Crush the effects of air pressure work file. So I've put this in the hub for you. It is virtually identical to the one that is in the lesson, but make sure you use the one here instead of the one in the lesson. The major difference is as you scroll down here, you are going to see that there is a link in this version that's different than the one in the lesson. The one in the lesson is a broken link. It's old, it's expired. So I have replaced it with a new link that does work. So just make sure you use this one instead. Now this is a Google Doc, as you can see. And with Google Docs, um, you, when you open it, cannot make edits to this document because this is my Google Doc. So in order to do this, to make some edits to it, if you're not familiar with Google Docs, you would go to File and you, oh, get me out of the way file and go to make a copy once you make a copy of this if it will save it on your own google drive and you will be able to make edits to it now say you don't have a google drive you don't have an account in google that's okay too instead of doing that you're going to go to file and you're going to go to download and you're just going to download it as a Microsoft Word file you will open it in Word and you'll be able to edit it in Word and save it and upload it to the Dropbox at that time. So either way, you can have access to it, make edits to the document and use it. Now, if you decide to go the route of using it in Google Docs, when you are all finished, you should still go to File, Download as a Microsoft Word document. You can save that to your computer. Even if you don't have Word on your computer, you can still save the file and you can upload that Word document to the Dropbox so that I can get access to it. Unfortunately, you cannot upload Google Docs to the Dropbox. So they do have to be Word documents, or um, sometimes you can do a PDF. Um, I prefer it to be in Word because it's just easier for me to grade. But you have the option of converting it right here in Google Docs. All right, so we're gonna go through all three of the three tasks you have to do. You have task one, task two, and task three, very similar to what we've done in previous lessons as well. Um, so let's start with task number one. So with task number one, you are going to use the information found in the first slide of your lesson. There is a data table here in blue over to the right. And what you're gonna have to do for this one is you are going to complete this sentence here. As altitude increases, the air pressure blank. So when we look at our data table, over to the left side, we see altitude is increasing, going from zero to 8,000 feet above sea level. So you have to decide what is happening to air pressure here. Is air pressure increasing as I go down here? or is air pressure decreasing? So you need to complete that sentence and fill that out. Is it increasing or is it decreasing? Then we have task number two, and that is you have four questions to answer for task number two. If I go back again to our lesson, you will see at the very bottom, it talks about going to this website here, this resource site. And when you click on that link, that is going to bring you to this website. And you will just read this website and answer those four questions. So, so far that's pretty simple, right? The next thing you're gonna be doing is you're going to be doing the actual crush lab itself. And this is where you can do this in person or you can just watch the recording and we're gonna kind of go through it together. So if you do it in person, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be kneading an aluminum soda can, a shallow pan, excuse me, baking pan, pie pan, storage bowl, some sort of a little container filled with cold water. 
some water, a metric ruler, a stovetop burner, and two oven mitts or hot pads. So let's go ahead and, and sh I'm going to kind of walk you through some of the some of what's going to be done procedurally here. And also we're going to think a little bit about what's going on um, as far as the, you know, what is actually going on in this experiment. Okay. So I'm going to grab my pen over here and we're just going to think a little bit about it to start with. So let's draw some pictures. If we have a soda can, it's opened, right? And I want you to think about before we do anything, before we do any kind of an experiment at all, um, is there anything in this can? It's completely, I'm going to say it's empty, right? It's empty in that there's no liquid in there. But instead of having liquid inside of it, what is inside of the can? I'll give you just a second to think about it. Because I'll tell you that there is something in there. All right, so hopefully you said there was air inside the can. So we have molecules of air inside the can. Now, if there is an opening here, and this is open up on top, then what we know is that the molecules of air inside the can are at the same pressure as the molecules of air outside the can. How do we know that? Well, we know that because air is neither moving in, into or out of the can, right? If there was a pressure difference, then air would move, oh, air always moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. When it does that, it feels like wind. We actually feel that air movement and it's called wind. So if air doesn't move at all, then we know the pressure is the same. So before we begin this experiment, we have equal air pressure. So we have um, air pressure the same inside the can as outside the can. The next step we do is we add a little water to the bottom of this pan or this can. Now adding the water doesn't change the air pressure at all. It keeps the air pressure the same inside the can to outside the can. Air pressure is exactly the same, right? So our next step is we are going to take this and we are going to place it on top of a stove burner. And we're going to heat this thing up. We're going to add heat. So I want you to think of what happens to the water when we add heat, right? Eventually that water just gets hotter and hotter. The temperature of the water is going to increase and then the water is going to start to boil. Our boiling water here. When it starts to boil, some of it, some of that water, liquid water is gonna to turn to water vapor, gaseous water, and we start to see steam coming out of the top of the can, right? So here's the thing that becomes a little bit tricky. This becomes a little bit tricky. When steam forms, these pink dots here, they start to move out of the can. They get pushed out. So air, starts getting pushed out of the can. It's moving out. And there is no air inside the can. We have some water drops, water vapor. We'll make them purple just to make them a little easier to see. But these water vapor, gaseous um, molecules of water, they push out the pink air. So pink is air. And inside the purple is our water vapor. So they are displacing the air. So now we still have equal pressure. We still have equal pressure. But the pressure is water inside, air outside. But still the pressure is the same. Okay? We know the pressure is the same because the can is staying intact. 
it's not exploding, if the pressure was high inside, then the can would explode, right? So if you have extra pressure inside, it's going to build up and build up and just cause it to explode. If the air pressure is much lower in the can, it's going to implode because the air pressure outside would crush the can. So what we're going to be doing is our next step is we're going to have a pan over here filled with cold water. Cold water. And we are going to flip this can upside down. And it's going to trap all of that water vapor inside. But it's cold now. What happens to water vapor when it gets cold? Does it stay a gas or does it change? Remember our states of matter. If water vapor or any gas cools down past that boiling point, it then condenses back into a liquid. So now we have that water just condensed back into a liquid. And do we have any gas inside at all? Remember, we lost the air earlier. And now we've also lost the water vapor. So we've lost the gas inside. There is no gas in here. It is a vacuum. So now let's think of pressure. And this I'm not going to give you, but I want you to think about it. If we don't have any gas inside the can, is the pressure in the can greater than or less than the pressure outside the can? So we have to think about that. We have pressure inside the can. Is this greater than or less than pressure outside the can? Because the air pressure is always there. That didn't change. Those dots of pink outside, they're still there. Let's draw those in to make sure we know they're still there. So now where is there greater air pressure? And remember what I said before, if the air pressure outside the can is lower than inside the can, then but if the air outside the can is greater than inside the can, it's kind of like you step it on the can. It's implosion. All right, so think about those things while you're answering the questions and as we go into our clip here. So let's go ahead and watch this little clip. Uh, let's see if I can push play here. Move this little toolbar. There we go. So you need to wear goggles. You need a can. You need a pitcher of water. You just need some water. They make it put it in a pitcher to make it look cool. It's a dish with some cold water in it. Some tongs. Hot pads or gloves is nice so you don't burn yourself. That's your cold water. Put a little in your can, right? And you're going to heat that up on the stove until you see steam rising out of the can. And then you're going to put on your gloves and get your hot pad. And you're going to quick flip it upside down inside the bowl of water. And what do we see? Oh, let's, let's look at it one more time. Oh, one more time. That's what we see, right? So that is what we are seeing here. So let's go back to our lab sheet again. That's what we see. That's the observations that we make. So now we have to determine, was the pressure greater outside the can or inside the can? OK? And remember what happened. Remember that as the water in the can boiled and turned into a gas, it pushed the air out of the can, creating just water vapor in the can. And as that water was Vapor was cooled down rapidly. It condensed back into a liquid. And now you don't have any gas in the can at all. 
Those are very, th very important things to remember here. All right, so let's look at some of, um, some of our questions here. Let's look at question number eight. That's a tricky one. It says, leave the can in the water. So we flip it upside down. It says, leave the can in the water for a moment. Measure the amount of water in the pan. Was it more or less than when you began? So when we, we um, look at this, this was the part that wasn't really shown in the experiment. We find that the amount of water in the pan, the little bowl in the picture, actually decreased a little bit. So some water was sucked up into the can. Does that make sense? Some of the water was sucked up into the can. That's the observation that you should have made. <laughs> and then you're trying to think about why. Why is that? So I want you to answer, why do you think some water was sucked up into the can? Okay. So what did you observe as the can was heated on the burner? Think about, you can go back and rewatch that part of the video. What observation were we trying to make while it was heating up? How did we know that phase change from liquid to gas had happened? What did we observe after we turned the can upside down? What happened when we turned the can upside down? And it says, when you lifted the can, what did you find out about the amount of water in the can? So again, as we said before, that should have increased. So the water in the pan or the bowl decreased and the water in the can should have increased. That one's the trickiest part. Even if you're doing this yourself, that's really hard to measure because sometimes it falls right out and it's difficult to tell. But the water in the bowl should have, should have decreased and the water in the can should have increased. All right, so let me go back. At the very beginning, when you put the water into the empty can, was it really empty? We talked about this. What was in there? It wasn't really empty. It had water, but what else was in there? When you started the activity, the can was open to the air outside the can. How was the pressure? Remember what we said before, was the pressure from inside the can to outside the can, was it the same? Was there a difference when we first started before we heated at all? So if you can't remember, go back and watch that segment of the video earlier. Right now, reread this. After heating the can, were there more air molecules? Now, remember what happened with the air, right? So remember that even though we have water vapor in the can now, where did those air molecules go? Again, if you can't remember, go back and watch that segment of the video. So after heating the can, were there fewer air molecules inside or outside the can? This is pretty much asking the same question twice. Um, so where were there more, where were there less? They're gonna be opposites of each other. So one place there's more, one place there's less. And then we invert it. And as we invert it and see what happens, what you guys saw, the can got crushed, right? At this point, you inverted the can into the pan of water, preventing air from flowing in or out of the can. What did you observe, right? And so now you're gonna come up with your conclusion. Why did the can crush? Please explain why the can crushed in terms of air pressure. Where was there more air pressure? Where was there less air pressure? Why did the air pressure change? And how did that result in the crushing of the can? And then finally, the last thing here is go back to this resource website. I'm gonna actually use a different resource here, right? You're gonna click on this one. Read about how a mercury barometer works. And then it says, how was the can similar to a mercury barometer? So don't forget to answer this last question. How was the can similar to a mercury barometer? That's it for this portfolio, this lab. I hope that helped you out. Again, if you can do that yourself, fantastic. If you can't, just use a demonstration. You do not need to do this one in person if you don't want to or if you can't. But if you can, it's sometimes just fun to do. It's kind of a fun experiment. Um, let me know if you have questions or concerns. Um, otherwise, guys, um, good luck, and I will see you in the next video.